Um, good morning, grade 12, and welcome to the webinar. I'm just going to allow two minutes for the rest of the people to attend. Please use this time to download the handouts that we've um, uploaded for you. And also, just make sure that you know where the questions are. I am going to discuss the poem with you. Um, I just want to see what page it's on. It's in your study guide 2. It is Dian's Vosh on page 59. If you want to follow in your book, you're welcome to do that. Then I'll speak to you shortly. Okay, I think we can start. I think most people are, yeah. Um, good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Grade 12 First Edition of Language, EAT. Your study is a webinar this morning. Um, my name is Carla Lambrecht, and I'm the Education Specialist for Afrikaans. And um, with us today, we have Surina Jordan. She's in the background, you aren't able to see her. And um, we are experiencing a bit of difficulty with the uh, um, signal this morning for some reason. If we realize that um, there's a bit of disruptions here, then we are going to put the webcam off so you won't be able to see me then. Um, we, I will let you know that you aren't supposed to see me anymore because it just stabilizes the connection a bit if, if the video is not on. Okay, let's just go through the basics. I'm sure that you've know, you know them by now, but let's just go through them anyway before we get started. If you are struggling to hear me, make sure that your audio is on and that your speaker volume is turned up. That is the volume on your device as well. You will automatically be muted when joining the session. That is so that we don't hear everyone's background noises. Should you have any questions, you can ask your questions in the question box below. I'm also going to ask you to raise your hand. That's the only way for me to know that you are still with me. Let's quickly do that. Let's quickly raise our hands. Let me just see that everyone knows where that is. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Then, 
You can download this presentation in the handout bar on the right hand side of your screen. Just remember that this handout will not be available. It expires after this session. We will make it available for you later, but I think it will be best for you to download it now while we're busy. Then you know that you have it and afterwards you can check some information that you've missed. Or if you had some questions, you can just go back and check on that. Okay, um, attendees are encouraged to ask questions and leave comments. However, irrelevant or inappropriate comments will result in an attendee being dismissed from the session. I'm not going to unmute anyone to ask questions. I've realized that it wastes time if we do it like that, because sometimes I unmute someone and then they say that they accidentally raise their hand. So I will read the question to you and then answer the question for everyone to hear. Okay, this, uh, pre this uh, PowerPoint is in the handout and then also this webinar session is being recorded and is available on the YouTube Impact YouTube channel so you can just subscribe to the um, Impact YouTube channel as well. Okay, let's get started. Okay, we are, today we are going to do, we are still at um, term two at the Gedichte. We're going to do Die Hans Worsch, which means the clown. It is on page 59 of your study guide too. You should have two study guides. The one is for the language and the second one is for the literature. Please make sure that you have both. Okay, before we get started, I just want to make sure that you are all on track with the literature. I'm going to explain to you what you should have done in term one and also where you need to be with term two. Um, term two is a short term, you know, because it's a record examen coming up in and in. So we finished the work in grade 12 quite early. So I'm going to go up to week six, which is the last week for you. So this is everything that you need to know. Um, for term one, you are doing the pro. You should have done page one to 73. When I say do, uh, you should have done, I mean that you should have read it and do all the activities on these chapters. Okay, the gedichte, the poem that you um, had to do was Tumela, Woonstel, Bewoner, Kontak, Kinderland, Things That Go Bump in the Night, Bicycle, Sonder, a Slot, and Woorde. For term two, you should do the pro, page 74 to page 100, and all the activities. This means that you should be done with the book. You should finish that book now. And the gedichte that you are going to do is School Seen Blues. That is the poem that I did with you two weeks ago. Today we are doing Die Hans Worsch. And the next webinar I'm going to do is going to be Westpark. And then we know that we have done all your, all your poems as well. Please make sure that you know all of these for your exams. Okay, so let's start with the Hans Bosch. There is here Pretorius. I'm going to read it to you. Just quickly put up your hands again so I know that everyone's with me. No one quickly ran to fetch a book and then I'll back it before I start reading. Let's just make sure everyone is here. Okay. 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 Let's get started. You can just listen to me now. Die ons woos dier SJ Pretorius oor sy afsichtelike bochel en kromheid het hulle omgekogel en bitterder was hulle venein as sy vergroeide rugraadpijn. Tussen die diere in die hoek het hy die eensamheid gesoek Met kleren wat gedierig gaar is, wat doen die vriend met my salaris. Hy het maandlis by die postkantoor een brief gepos of een gelees by die dierenkrante oor en oor. Sou daar toch ergens iemand wees? En daar die eeuwige reek en drank nie eens sou huil as hy bedank. Maar waar hy in die sirkus stend, op achtig teen die vermaamente, sorry, op um, hoog teen die tokelwerk om klouter, die dood uitaard en klein kabouter, sy duivelstreke uithaal onder dat amal skater van die wonder, 
is hy, hoe seer veracht verlate, nog dier die baas beskou as een bate. Toe het hy, toe die het een brief gekom een dag, hy het oor die bed gebuk, verblind, terwijl een bochel vroukie sag stervend vluister, dankie my kind. Ok. Ok, let's start with the discussion. Where should I have, you, you might find some of the words, it is quite a hard poem to do. I'm going to try and discuss all the hard words with you and you will see that with the word particulars I'm doing now, I might not discuss everything, but it will become clear to you as we move along. Ok, you will see that this poem has five stanzas. Ok, the first one is, Wish I afsichtelike bochel. Afsichtelike means aardige hoe lelik het a ugly, a ugly hunchback. A bochel is a, hunch, a hunchback. Ok, en kromheid het hulle om gekochel. Kochel is when you um, tease someone. Ok, en bitterne was hulle fenein. Fenein is hartelijkheid, it is malice. Ok, in uh, verse 7, met kleren wat gedierig gaar is. When you say that someone's kleren, their clothing is gaar, it means that it is a uh, torn, stick in the kleren. Wat doen die vent met my salaris, of met sy salaris? That means, you, you would call someone a vent, it's like saying, what is the bloke doing? It's not a very respectful way of uh, addressing someone. Okay. Firmament, that is a synonym for starry jimmel, for starry sky. En aan tokelwerk. Um, it is the, the ropes that he climbed in the circus tent. Okay. And then kloter, that is when you climb, uh, usually you would say a child, klim and kloter, they are climbing everywhere on a jungle gym or whatever. Okay. Uit taart. Wanneer jy iemand uit taart, it means that you provoke them. Ok, uh, klein kabouter, this means that he was a small in stature. He, he was a small, he had a small bulk and he, a kabouter would be a, a dwarf. Ok, duivelstreke, een woord vir die streke in Turkies van die Hans Wors om mense te vermaak. Okay, that is the tricks he did. Duivelstreke is the tricks that, that the clown did in the um, circus. Um, um, the skater, that means to laugh. Iemand skater lach, it means that they are um, laughing very loudly from the tummy. And wonder in this context, it says that I will skater for the wonder. That is like the seven wonders of the world. It is a, it is a um, unusual um, uh, something unusual or uncommon. Okay. And then, yeah, a frame of verschijnsel would be a, a wonderwerk. We see it. Oh, sorry, I just. And that would be height. And I'm bought it, it is the food deal. When someone is a bought it, means that they are an asset to you. Okay. And starvent would mean someone is dying. The starvent of the shun is the dying person. Okay. Then the answer let's look at the title. Come on, let's the title. Uh, the word Hans Bosch has the same meaning as, as a nar. It is a clown that's in the circus. They are there to entertain people. Okay, um, in this poem, they are judging people that go to the circus to laugh at people that are deformed. Panitema, the theme of this poem, I'm going to read it to you in Afrikaans. I am translating as much as I can so that I know that you understand what I'm saying. But it's very important that you also know the Afrikaans because you it will be expected of you to answer this in Afrikaans talk. Okay, the theme of the gedig is the pain and lighting van ongelukkiges of gebrekkeliges but as gevolg van anderse onmenslikheid teenwoord sy mede mens. Okay, yo, it's a lot. 
Okay, the theme is the pain and suffering of people with disabilities as a result of the inhumane treatment of other people. Okay, so they are suffering because people are treating them badly or differently because they have some kind of disability. Okay, so daar, the tone and the stemming of this gedicht is swaarmoedig. The tone of the poem will therefore be sad. Okay. Then the rhyme patroon, the, the rhyme in this poem, you will see that it alternates between par rhyme and kruis rhyme. Okay. Stanza 1 is par rhyme, A-A-B-B. Uh, strofe 2 stands up to is also for rhyme. Strofe 3 is a kruis rhyme, that would be A, B, A, B. And strofe 4 is for rhyme, and strofe 5 is kruis rhyme. Okay. Then let's start with strofe 1, stanza 1. Let's look at the first verse. It says, Wish I oglige, lelike, bochel. Okay, we discussed this. A bochel, if someone has a bochel, they have a hunchback. So they are saying his um, afsichtelike bochel, that means his ugly, ugly hunchback. Okay. Uh, verse 2, en kromheid het hulle hom gekogel. Kromheid, that would be the crookedness of his back. So about, um, because of his ugly hunchback and his crooked back, they um, teased him. Real three and four. Hello, what you can do in my room was harder as the rug pain that I as for it. He experienced a lot of pain because of this hunchback that he, ha that he had. But the hatefulness towards him by other people were worse than the pain he experienced from his back. Stands up to um, verse 5. It says, Tissen die dieren in a hook. That means that he was at the animal cages. He didn't mix with the rest of his colleagues in the circus. He was alone where they keep the animals in cages. He, he sat there in a corner. But he read his letters at the cages where the animals are kept. He did not sit with his other colleagues. That means that he did not have a good relationship with his colleagues. Real says, That means he went looking for loneliness. He would rather be alone than be in the company of those people. Real Sieve, met kleren wat gedure gaar is. Remember, we said if an Afrikaans is, I say my kleren is gaar, it means that it is uh, torn. And then verse 8, it says, Wat doen die vent met sy salaris? Okay, the vent is like saying a bloke. It, you don't have a lot of respect. So he is saying, his, he wants to know what the guy that needs to take care of them is doing with the money. If he can't, cannot even buy them decent clothing. Strofe 3, real 9 to 10. Hy het maandeks by die postkantoor a brief gepost of een gelees. Ok, so every month he went to the post office to either post a letter to someone or to receive one. Ok, then um. We are again discussing um, verse 10 and 11. So it says that a, a brief gepost of enige lees by die dierkratte oor en oor. That means that when he received a letter, he went to read that letter with the animals, at the animal cages. And he read it again and again, oor en oor. This might show us that he misses someone. Whoever is writing that letter to him is someone that he misses. So he keeps on reading that letter like you would if you really miss someone. Fine. Then in verse 12, it says, So daar toch ergens iemand wees. Can you see that that verse is in quotation marks? This means that someone is saying this. And the people saying this are his colleagues in the circus. They can't believe that someone somewhere actually cares enough for him 
to write him a letter so they are saying so they doch ergens iemand wees could there be someone that cares enough to write a letter so those are the words of his colleagues okay strofe 4 en daar die ewige reken drank okay well, verse 13 and 14, my apologies. And daar die ewige reek en drank, nie een sal heil as hy bedank. Bedank meaning resign. Hy reik na dieren en drank. He smells like the animals and the liquor that the people are drinking around him and him himself as well. He does not feel home in the circus. And he knows that, it says there that should he resign, should he leave, no one would cry over it. So no one will miss him if he's not there anymore. It makes you wonder why he's staying there. Why would he keep on um, performing in the circus if he doesn't feel at home and that he doesn't um, spend time with his colleagues? And, um, and no one will miss him if he's gone. They are 15 and 16. Maar waar hy in die circus stand, op achtig. Can you see op achtig? That, that is ape. They are saying that he, he looks like an ape when he climbs the ropes in the circus. Um, it might also be that he looks like a monkey because we know that he is he's a dwarf. So he might look like a monkey as well. But he is being um, compared to a monkey. Real 18. Die dood, die dood uitart. That means he is provoking the dead. It shows that he is not scared to die. Dan reel 22. Um, it says hier nog die die baas beskou as a baat. That means that this boss sees him as an asset. He doesn't care about his well-being. He's only keeping him there because he, he brings in money. He sees him as someone he can make money from. Okay, strofe 5, stanza 5. Real 23, toe het a brief gekom een dag. Hy het a brief gekry om te sê, sy ma is op ons sterfbed. Hy het na haar toe gegaan. He received a letter to say that his mom is dying. So he went to her. Where she is, we don't know. We just know that he went to her. Then in verse 24, it says, Hy het oor die bed gebuk verblind. That means that he was um, he was looking over the bed at his mum and he was blinded. It's important for you to remember that when he says he is blinded, he is not permanently blinded. He is talking about his eyes filling with tears and those tears are blinding him for a moment. He is not permanently blind. This um, will be a question if they ask this poem, um, this poem in your exam. Real 25, terwijl a bochel vroukie sag, bochel vroukie, this now tells us that his mom also had a bochel, she also had a hunchback, and we know that a hunchback is a genetic um, disorder, so he got it from his mom, now we know that she was also a dwarf, she, was, um, she also had this genetic disorder, and that's where he got it from, from his mother. They might ask you where did he get his bochel from, and then you must say his mom, because they are saying this to us now. Real 26, starwind fluister, dankie my kind. Sy ma sê vir hom dankie. Why, why is his mom, she's thanking him, she's saying thank you my child. She's thanking him because he probably sent her money. Um, and that's probably the reason why he stayed at the circus, even though he was so unhappy there, he stayed there and he sent his mum money. So in Afrikaans, I'm going to read the Afrikaans for you, it says, Sy ma sê dankie omdat hy moendlik vir haar geld gesteer het. Sy kon die rede wees hoekom hy so lang in die circus geblei het. His mother is thanking him, maybe he sent her money and that is why he stayed in the circus for so long. Okay, this went quite... Quite quick. Okay, so if you have any questions, please ask them now. 
if I don't have time to answer your question, please don't be worried. I will answer your question um, afterwards. I'm just scanning through the questions and asking what I, what I see first. So please don't be offended if I skip yours. Afterwards, I will receive a summary of all the questions and I will answer them and they will be sent to you. Okay, let's see. I just want to get to the questions quickly. Hmm. Oh, I see, yeah. Audio is a bit soft. I hope that that was sorted out. And um, what is Monix? That is monthly. So it is a monthly. He went to the post office every month, monthly. No, they did not keep the clown in a cage. He was sitting, he was, he read his letters at the place where they keep the animals in their cages. So he sat in a corner um, where, the, where they keep the animals. If we finish all times and have more time during the lockdown, will it be possible to have a session on the pro? We'll definitely look at that. I also see in the other grades, um, the learners are quite worried about their books. So if we have time, um, We'll definitely look into into discussing the pro. Can you please explain the poem in English? And um, just go just go back, just make sure that you download the handouts that's there. Um, and I did explain quite a lot in English. If if you feel like you still need a bit of more explanation in English, and um, just send an email to academics at impact, then I will take a look at it and see how I can assist you any, any further. If the lockdown gets extended again, what's going to happen with exams? We have we have no news from Impact, and we also don't know. And Impact can't make that decision themselves. We need uh, to hear what uh, Sakai decides. The moment they let us know what's going to happen with the exams, we will let you know. Unfortunately, we are also still in the dark. I think they are. Sakai also doesn't know if it's getting extended or what is the situation. And even if it gets lifted, it will happen in phases. And in what phase will we fall under? So there's quite a lot of questions. But when we when we know, you will know. Yes, could the letters be from his mom? It's most likely from his mom. Since they are talking about his mom and he misses her, and that's why he reads her letters over and over and over. And the last letter he received was the one to say that his mom is dying, and that's why he went to her. Okay. Um, op wat er wijze word die wending en die gedig aangedui? Haal een voorbeeld uit. Okay. So the wending is where is the turning point in the poem? I, I want to see if I can go back for you quickly. Um, I, I hope that you have the facilitator's guide with you. Because uh, the facilitator guide gives you the answers to that. That's why I don't really pay much attention and you will see in verse 23 you get you have that ellipse you see that doiki 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 um that that is the vending okay that is where things change his mom has now he received the letter that he dreaded receiving and his mom is dying okay Oh no, I lost my place again. Just want to see so oh, I think I might be skipping quite a few. It is more like that is more. Um she's asking that um could it be that his mother is thanking him because 
is at her bed while she's dying, that he came to visit her, it is likely. And um, just remember to, to check the facilitator guide memorandum. And when answering in an exam, just make sure that you also include the answers that we have in the facilitator's guide in the memorandum. But it could be that you're thanking him because he sent her money and that he made the, the effort to actually be at her bedside when while she's dying. When will you do another webinar? Not next week, the week after that, we will do the last poem for your year forever. If the exams are not happening, how, will, how are we going to get our marks? Your SPAs will be done differently. They will find a way. You won't be disadvantaged in any way, so don't be worried about it. It's not like you're going to lose the mark. Oh, I lost my place again. Yeah, uh, uh, the hunchback is also a dwarf. So, so we know that he has a uh, dwarfism, and I think that's the English word for it. And also he has a, he has a hunchback. Oh, guys, I lost my place. I'll be skipping them to test because it's supposed to start tomorrow. I'm going to make a note here. Yeah? I don't want to say so anything. I'm just going to make sure about the term tests for you. Um, no, with grade 12, it's different. Uh, I'm not sure about the invigilation part of this. So I am going to make a note and make sure about the term test that's supposed to start today. And then we'll get back to you about, about that. Okay, guys, I think this, I think I answered most of this. Please send me those questions. Um, I am going to answer all of these questions and it will be sent out to you. So everyone will be able to read those questions. Um, and I'll be able to, I think I will be able to elaborate a bit more on the questions that you are struggling with. Okay, guys, thank you so much for attending. For attending this session. Uh, I hope you found it very helpful um, and good luck with the rest of the webinars for the week and I hope that you are keeping uh, up to date with the literature as well. Okay guys, enjoy the rest of your day. Bye.